cha-cha on the ballroom beat You got two left feet Get on the ballroom beat They're dancing in the street They're on the ballroom beat We can tangle, we can swing, we can do anything Walking through the door and waltz on the floor You wanna feel the heat Get on the ballroom beat Cha-cha on the ballroom beat Foxtrot on the ballroom beat Salsa on the ballroom beat Hi, and welcome to On the Ballroom Beat. I'm your host, Lania Berger, and tonight's special guest is very special indeed. We have the Arthur Murray traveling consultant, Jessica Holty, joining us. A very special interview with her to share with you. She was in town in Palm Harbor, Florida at the Arthur Murray Ballroom Dance Studio doing coaching for the students and staff there. Don't go anywhere. Here comes Jessica Holty with her interview on the Ballroom Beat. <laughs> On the Ballroom Beat. I'm your host, Lania Berger, and I am so excited to have Jessica Halty with me here on the Ballroom Beat today. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Jessica. Thank you so much. It is so great to have you on the show in Palm Harbor. Now, you're going to be here coaching all day today, isn't that right? Yes, I'm so excited. We're so excited to have you. <laughs> Tell me, um, you've been doing a lot of coaching around the, around the country, around the world. Mm -hmm. What are some of the best parts about being an Arthur Murray coach? Um, I love every studio that I go into. I think that uh, in general, Arthur Murray people are awesome people. So no matter where I go, what studio, what part of the world, I always feel like I'm going home in a way. Like everyone feels like family and they're so welcoming and wonderful and eager to learn and share information. And that's just such a special environment to be in regardless of where you go. It's awesome. That is really, really great to hear. And you know, we feel that I think when we go to the dance ramas and we go to the area functions, mm -hmm. it is is like a big family reunion so we, we all you know we connect so much and it's really really great do you think now I, I know you've coached obviously in America but you've coached in Japan you've coached in Mexico um, you've been all over the place mm -hmm. do you feel even when you travel as far as Japan that it's the same kind of feeling as right here absolutely yeah it's amazing to me because you think sometimes with the cultural differences and language barriers and stuff that it would feel different but really it's the people that are drawn to dance and drawn to Arthur Marine end up here tend to be a similar type of people like I feel like we're all Arthur Marie people you know it's like it, it's across the world it's the same we're all people that love dance and just want to have fun in life and be with people that have similar interests and want to also just have fun and enjoy life and live a better standard of life through dance mm -hmm. and that is just across the board you know that people that are very similar in that kind of stuff are drawn to Arthur Murray and stay with Arthur Murray so I find that no matter where it's all people that are similar in that way. You've been you spent a good amount of time in the studio mm -hmm. teaching uh, managing doing all different roles in the studio and you know how we can affect people's lives through dance. Yeah. Coaching do you feel like you're able to do that but on a wider grander scale yeah absolutely I think that one of the like I said I mentioned sharing like knowledge about dance and I feel like over the years so many people have given so much to me in the way of dance and teaching and training and I've learned so much from people all across the Arthur Murray world and, and other types of dance and other dance communities also and so in coaching I have the ability to give that information back to such a wider group of people and it's so much fun to see people using stuff like I, I judged the unique dance drama this last week and to see people out on the floor dancing things that I was able to help make but feel better to influence or choreography that I helped them with or choreography that I gave them and it's such a cool feeling to be able to have an impact 
on different people's dancing all over the place and to see people grow and enjoy their dancing more because of something that I was given at some point that I was able to give back. That's so cool. It's really amazing. You spoke about judging at Unique Dance Arama, and I should mention that Jessica is a coach, but she's also a judge, and you've judged at all sorts of different competitions around the world. Can you tell us from a judge's perspective, what are some of the things that stand out to the on the floor to you the most? I love personality on the floor. I love to see people having fun. I think sometimes when people think competition, they think it's so serious, <laughs> and they get out there and they're so serious about it, but really, I mean, dancing is fun, it's joy, and to see that on people when they're competing is really special to me, so I love seeing that. I think that that makes uh, it so much more enjoyable as a judge to watch, and I'm drawn to the people that have more personality and are having fun on the floor, but as far as, like, technical things, I think a lot of the stuff that stands out are posture, how you carry yourself, and, uh, uh, how you hold your frame and things like that, things that are easy to see in a crowd of people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of a footwork Nazi when I teach, <laughs> but sometimes that gets lost on a dance floor of a crowd of people. So oftentimes some of the details we really like focus on um, are important for your overall dance like knowledge and ability through the levels. But I think the things that tend to stand out on the floor from like a judge's perspective are often how you carry yourself, your personality, your frame, the things that are up top almost yeah. more so than the things that are all the picking details. Now, I also noticed that when we're talking about a higher level of competition, we're talking about professional competition, we're talking about scholarship competition, mm -hmm. would you agree that when we get to the finals mm -hmm. and it's the top six, mm -hmm. all of them are so fantastic that it's almost that's got to be part of the hardest of judging? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's am it's amazing to me, and the the level of dance, the standard of dance, just continually gets better and better over the years. Uh, there's always been amazing dancers, but it seems like over the years it just continues to get better and better. And there's more and more amazing dancers. So in those top levels, it really is down to really fine details, and sometimes even personal preference, which is really interesting. Dance is so subjective, so sometimes different styles people can lean more towards one person's style or another person's style and, and as a judge you, you have to make those snap judgments and so oftentimes the results are less important than how you feel about your dancing and the progress you're seeing because you never know what they're seeing at that moment on the floor or what their preferences are with dancing and so if you know those finals especially the pros it's amazing to me uh, we're, I was sitting with another one of the judges watching the professional competition the part of it that I wasn't judging it unique and we're watching the semifinal and every person in the semifinal was so good right. it was just amazing I mean you have to narrow it down yeah. but the, it t takes nothing away from the amount of effort and the ability and the what people are doing on the floor at all of the stages of competition even people that don't right. make the final are sometimes spectacular dancers right. so and I think that's so great to hear because oftentimes I think that that folks who don't make it into that semifinal or don't make it into that final feel so crushed and yet if they could see the whole floor the way that we do, they'd understand. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> yeah. right? The whole floor was fantastic. It's got to yeah. be so hard to make those selections. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's why there's a panel of judges so that, that you get the, the most, you know, honest result possible. But it's, you know, there's, there's so much hard work and dedication and energy and effort that goes into every single competitor on the floor. And so no matter what the placements, they're all winners in, in a way, you know, and to see them out there enjoying themselves and doing what they love and sharing their passion for dance, it makes it all worth it, regardless of results, I think. Don't go anywhere. When we return, the second half of our interview with Arthur Murray's international traveling consultant, Jessica Holty. 
ever need a doctor after hours? Well, searching won't help. But what do you do? You could go to the urgent care or ER, but if only there was a better way. Introducing the MNO Plus Card. No waiting rooms, no copay, no consultation fee. Giving you 24 7 access to a doctor by phone or online. It's easy to get started with affordable plans starting at $15 a month for a family of five. For more information, visit MNOplus.com today. Everyone's story is different, so why be limited to just one or two options? With Norcom's Norflex Home Loan, you're given the flexibility to tell your story. Pick your terms from 8 to 30 years, all while maintaining a low, fixed mortgage rate. You can pay off your loan more quickly or choose a term based on your budget and timeline. Whatever you do with the Norflex Home Loan, make it part of your financial plan. Norflex. Short term, long term, your terms. Apply online at norcommortgage.com. a doctor after hours? Well, searching won't help. But what do you do? You could go to the urgent care or ER, but if only there was a better way. Introducing the MNO Plus Card. No waiting rooms, no copay, no consultation fee. Giving you 24-7 access to a doctor by phone or online. It's easy to get started with affordable plans starting at $15 a month for a family of five. For more information, visit mnoplus.com today. Welcome back to On the Ballroom Beat. Our special guest this week is Jessica Holty, who is a traveling consultant for Arthur Murray International. She is one of the co-creators of the Zook Syllabus. If you're not familiar with what Zook is, make sure that you check out, there's a past episode of On the Ballroom Beat that is all about Zook, where we actually talk to her, uh, her former professional partner and the other co-creator of the Zook, um, Tommy Belmontes. It's a really, really fun interview that I'm sure you'd enjoy hearing. But now let's go ahead and touch base with Jessica Holty. We're going to talk a little bit about the Zook and other things like the 30 Day Dance Challenge in this second part of her interview. Now, um, we're talking about judging. You judged a competition in Brazil, mm -hmm. and the result for you personally was very interesting in that you were introduced to something brand new. Can you yes. talk a little bit about that? So down in Brazil, there's um, social dances that aren't necessarily as big here in the States. There's a couple of Brazilian ballroom dances. There's um, Samba de Gafieta, Fofo, mm -hmm. and Zouk are kind of the three main Brazilian ballroom dances. And I fell in love with Zouk while I was there. Uh, <laughs> the, the movements, the freedom, the expression of it, and I loved the music. Yeah. And so uh, I came back from that trip just you know kind of hooked <laughs> on that dance so <laughs> Uh, 
and what happens uh, subsequently is really fantastic for the entire world. I mean, you really made a mark on the Arthur Murray world in introducing the Zook syllabus to us. Yeah, it was really a great honor to be able to help with that because I came back with the, the excitement for it for me and I started studying it and um, drug, you know, Tommy along with me. <laughs> he loved it too. Um, but it was so fun to be able to take everything that I learned after coming back and be able to, again, share it with everyone and develop a way that, that people in Arthur Murray could learn Zook simply and easy in a way that related well with the things that they were learning in other dances. And it was so fun to work with Tommy and Gabriella putting that syllabus together because the uh, the dance nerd in me was like in hog heaven <laughs> because I love all the details of it and how the syllabus fits together and how things in Arthur Murray are so well layered to go from bronze one to bronze yes. two and how they tie in from dance to dance across in similar levels similar concepts are introduced and so it was so fun to work with um, Tommy and Gabrielle who are also so wonderful right. at dancing and teaching and layering and the syllabus and to be able to put our minds together and make it as easy and cohesive as possible for people it was just a pleasure to kind of do that process. And I think that's something really cool that you've pointed out because I think oftentimes when you're when people think of you developing a syllabus for a certain dance, they think you're just fantastic at that dance. Mm -hmm. But in the Arthur Murray system, you've got to be fantastic at everything and have a great understanding of the way that our syllabus is structured and created. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you did a great job of that. I mean, Thank I've taught you. I've taught students all the way through school figure ten, and boy, we love it. Do you have a favorite dance? I mean, I'm or sorry, a favorite step? figure that you created. Um, I don't think so. I think that every figure has a place, and I, I feel the same way about all the dances, too. It's like the music kind of, I'm such a music person, I'm really inspired by music, and so the figures kind of, uh, if they fit with that point in the music, it makes them special. Yeah. And so the ability to have the flexibility of a wide range of figures, and, and the same thing across the board with the dances, a wide range of dances to be able to use, and so whatever the music tells you, you can yeah. express. I think is the coolest part of it. So I don't necessarily have a specific figure that's my favorite. They're all have their kind of place in the music. Uh, what a lovely answer. I I agree with you. That's that's fantastic. But um, I'm going to ask you about a particular one because yes. Tommy said that because um, we we talked to him a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. Last week, and he said that um, your school figure number nine, you guys called everything but the kitchen sink. Oh, is that number nine? Yeah, yes. I have hard to remember which number is what. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one because it is, it feels like, you, like okay, now you've learned all of this, let's put it all together. And totally. It's such a fun figure. Such yes, a fun figure. absolutely. We did call it everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> it's terrible, I can't remember the real name because we now call it everything but the kitchen yeah, sink. Yeah, <laughs> me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was that was a really fun one. And we felt like a lot of the syllabuses did that in, yeah. in Bronze 4. They took a lot of the components from other yeah. layers and other stages of dance and put them together mm -hmm. in a real interesting way. Mm -hmm. And it kind of prepared people for silver level dancing, yes. which does that. And so we wanted to kind of do something similar where you took those major components and combined them all in everything but the kitchen sink type <laughs> stuff so that they were prepared for how to use the stuff kind of more in conjunction versus just all separate as figures, which was kind of fun. So. And, and speaking of preparing for the silver, do you think there will be a, a silver Zook syllabus eventually? We would love to do one. It just depends on, you know, how popular the dance gets. And there's there's so much material as far as Zook goes because a lot of the, the things, we didn't put a lot of head movements and stuff into the bronze syllabus because we felt like the balance of that and a lot of the things that that required, the center and all those kinds of things, were at a, a higher <laughs> level than most bronze level dancers were right. able to do comfortably. So there are a lot of fun aspects of the dance that weren't able to fit into a bronze level syllabus, either because of level or because of just time and space. I mean, you, know, you can't have a million steps right. in, in the syllabus. <laughs> and so it would be really fun to do a silver syllabus eventually to explore some of the other aspects that are so fun in Zook. So who knows, down the road that might be a possibility. So fingers crossed. We do it every time we go to competition. We write it in, by the way, because we awesome. really want everybody to get involved in Zook. We yeah. love it. We really Good. love it. I'm so glad.
Now I'm going to go back to one other teaching thing that I remember you from very well, which was the 30 Day Dance Challenge. Yes, that was so much fun. And the 30 Day Dance Challenge, I believe your class was Touch No Touch? Yep. Fabulous lesson. Thank Talk to you. us about 30 Day Dance Challenge. You know, it was so cool. It was one of those things that they actually filmed it at Unique Dance Around Room with a lot of the coaches and judges that were there. It's such a popular competition. There were so many people available. And it was really fun. They gave each of us, like, they had, like, four, I think, overall topics. Mm -hmm. And so we each had, like, an overall topic, and we could choose whatever to teach underneath that heading. And it was really fun to be involved in that because there were so many great teachers. And every day you got to watch the new video, and yeah. it was a really amazing teacher teaching something really cool and something it could help your dancing and I love the just the, there's so many amazing teachers in Arthur yes, Murray and just the 30 days was just the ones that happened to be available and at that competition you know that were they could sneak away for a video <laughs> and you could do a hundred days and still have amazing teachers and coaches left over that are Arthur Murray and so it's cool to see like that nice cross-section of people from all over the company from all different places and how everyone teaches things in a different interesting way but very accessible and very helpful yeah. and it was such a cool experience. I, I loved that Steve put that together. And yeah. I've got to tell you, thank you, Steve, because we Yay. still use it for group classes. Great. Even now, I'll say, listen, let's refer back. I remember there was a great you know, 30-day challenge, and we would look back and, and use some of those tips yeah. to share with our students because it was fantastic. Yeah. They're still on YouTube. If you oh, missed yeah. them, go, go look them up. 30-day dance <laughs> challenge. It's wonderful. One more question, and then, yeah. I, and then I'll let you go. You've been in this industry for, for such a long time. Can you tell us a little bit about your Arthur Murray journey and what's been most impactful for you about being a part of our company? Um, I, I was a social dancer mostly before I started. I took some social dance classes in college and I was big into salsa and I was bored at my job and, and uh, I found an ad in the paper and ended up coming in and starting training class and I was hooked. Like, first day of training <laughs> class, I knew that was it. Uh, and it was a... It's been such a cool experience because I'm a um, I'm a pretty like goal oriented detailed person and it was so nice to know that there was a career available in the arts that I could have a future with like a long term future with because I. I'm pretty practical and I always love dancing and singing and all, uh, performing, but I never saw a lot of the careers as a long-term mm -hmm, career. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are really short-lived. You right. know, dancers have like a limited amount of time that they can do a dancing career. And you know, it's like Hollywood and all that is so hit or miss. Right. You're so lucky if you make it. Whereas Arthur Murray was an outlet where I could enjoy the arts and enjoy sharing my love of dance and the arts with other people and actually have a long-term career where I could do it for the rest of my life yeah. and that's kind of unusual to find and I think that's kind of the most special thing about it for me is it was gave me the ability to do something that I love with all my heart and soul for the rest of my life and that's you know, that the, there's no substitute for that. So many people have jobs they hate, and to have something yeah. that you love so much that you get to do every day, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, it's very true. Jessica, thank you so much for being on the ball. Thank you for having me today. I'm so, so excited. We have Jessica Holty, professional competitor, coach, judge, Arthur Murray Gal extraordinaire. Thank you so much for thank being on the you. show. Thank you for being in yes. Palm Harbor, and we're looking forward to having you coach today. I'm so excited. <laughs>
So this technique is called no touch touch. There's a couple layers to it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to start out by talking about how you use your hands. So we're gonna start from fists and then nerd alert. We're gonna Wolverine this one, okay? So you're gonna send your fingers out like claws. Good, okay? So try that again, so fists and claws as fast as you can. You want those fingers to shoot out and be really sharp and stop. Okay, that's the first part of no touch touch. The second part is you're gonna do the same thing, but then you're gonna bring the hands close to each other, but without touching. Okay, so same thing with the Wolverine fingers, but no touch. They're gonna to get real close, but not actually touch hands. Then from there, you're going to go ahead and touch a little slowly once you get the hands close. So no touch, touch. No touch, touch. Okay. This you can apply in a lot of different places. You can apply it in any way that you touch your partner. So when you grab hands, when you're getting into frame, if you touch your partner on the chest, if you, you know, put your arms down into the air. So just even basic arm standing, you can use this technique. And so we're going to work on it in a couple different places in the box today so that you can do this whether or not you have a partner around. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do ladies part and man's part because it'll be a little different. So the ladies part for this one, we're going to do two boxes. The first First thing we're going to do is we're going to do no touch touch on our legs, then we're going to do no touch touch out to the side, to the air, then we're going to do no touch touch to your chest and your back, and then we're going to do no touch touch to the ceiling, and let the arms relax. So the first back half of the box you're going to do no touch touch on the back half, then you're going to go to the sides, then you're going to go chest and back, and then you're going to go up to the air. Again, so legs open, chest and back, and then up to the sky. Okay, the gentleman's part, we're just gonna do two. We want you to look manly. This is touching your chest and your legs is a little more feminine. So we're just gonna have you touch the air, okay? So you are going to go out with your first one, and then you're gonna go back like Clint Eastwood, you're getting ready to grab your guns for the second one. So we're gonna do one of those per box. So for the gentleman, you have no touch, touch out to the side for the box and then you have back guns for the next one. All right, again, no touch, touch out to the side, and then back on the second one. So you can practice these exercises to get used to how you use your hands when you touch your partner, or when you don't have a partner to, to grab onto, you can grab onto yourself. <laughs> um, it helps it to look a lot more emotional. When I go into studios, oftentimes people just don't think about how they touch their partner. They just go ahead and grab into frame and it really is a missed opportunity. So it would be a good way for you to get a little bit more emotional with your dancing. So thanks so much for tuning in. Work on this and we'll see you tomorrow. A big thank you again to Jessica Holty. It was such a pleasure to have you coaching in the Palm Harbor studio and, of course, as a guest on the Ballroom Beat. Now, make sure that you're tuning into WeBeam TV all the time because you will see reruns of all of your favorite shows, including on the Ballroom Beat. Streaming is happening all the time, and you will see some great reruns of some of the best moments from WeBeam TV. And make sure you tune in next week for our live show of On the Ballroom Beat, when we will be highlighting all of the great things that were happening on National Dance Day. See you next week on the Ballroom Beat. Cha cha on the Ballroom Beat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cha cha on the Ballroom Beat. Got two left feet. Get on the ballroom beat They're dancing in the street They're on the ballroom beat We can tangle, we can swing, we can do anything Walk in through the door and waltz on the floor You wanna feel the heat Get on the ballroom beat Cha-cha on the ballroom beat Foxtrot on the ballroom beat Salsa on the ballroom beat Cha-cha on the ballroom